Ukraine asks U.S. to lift ban on using American arms to strike at Russian territory. Ukrainian officials are trying to convince Washington to allow Kyiv to strike at Russian territory with U.S.-supplied weapons, saying the ban prevented them from attacking Russian troops amassing near Kharkiv Oblast, Politico reported. Moscow's troops launched a new offensive into the northeastern Kharkiv Oblast through the Russo-Ukrainian border on May the 10th with 30,000 troops reportedly involved in the operation. A group of Ukrainian parliamentarians is in Washington this week to mobilize support in the U.S. Congress, saying that the ban prevented them from hitting Russian military depots across the border, Politico wrote. The U.S. has supplied Ukraine with long-range ATACMS missiles, which Ukraine reportedly used to strike Russian targets in occupied Crimea. Washington's restrictions do not allow to replicate such an attack inside Russia's own territory. The main problem right now is the White House policy to limit our capability to strike military targets inside Russia, said David Arakamia, the parliamentary leader of President Volodymyr Zelensky's party, the servant of the people. We saw their military sitting one or two kilometers from the border inside Russia, and there was nothing we could do about that. Oleksandra Ostinova, the head of the Ukraine's Parliamentary Commission on Arms and Ammunition, told Politico in a separate interview. Russia knows there is a restriction for Ukrainians to shoot at the Russian territory. And we saw all of their military equipment sitting one or two kilometers from the border near Kharkiv, and there was nothing we could do. Ustinova noted. Two unnamed U.S. officials told Politico that Washington's policy on the issue has not changed. The assistance is for the defense and not for the offensive operations in Russian territory, one of them told the news outlet. The U.K. recently said that it does not oppose Ukraine using British-supplied weapons to strike directly at Russia. Latvian Foreign Minister Baiba Braz said earlier in May that several countries had sent weapons to Kyiv with no restrictions on strikes inside Russian territory. Cameron discusses peaceful deal regarding Ukraine with Trump, Sunak forced to justify. In April, UK Foreign Secretary David Cameron met with former US President Donald Trump to try to convince him to approve an increase in military aid to Ukraine. They also discussed a peace agreement on Ukraine, according to Politico and the Sunday Times. According to a source, Cameron asked Trump, what are the best conditions in which you, as a president, can make a deal in January? It's both sides holding their lines and paying a price for that. The UK government has long insisted that a peace deal is Ukraine's business, and former Prime Minister Cameron himself has publicly stated that peace comes through strength, not through appeasement and weakness. UK Prime Minister spokesperson says that the UK's position on Russia's war against Ukraine has not changed. I don't recognize those reports. Our position has not changed. Putin must fail. It is crucial, now more than ever in this conflict, that Putin is sent a very clear message that we will support Ukraine for as long as is necessary, he says. Sunak was also informed about the report. I haven't seen this Sunday Times article, so forgive me for that. But what I can tell you is that we have led when it comes to Ukraine, he said. The Prime Minister also adds that investments in Ukraine's security are investments in our security. Our NATO allies are already worried about the prospect of if Putin succeeds, that they'll be next, with all the consequences that would bring. The UK Prime Minister adds, earlier it became known that the UK is considering providing Kyiv with prototypes of laser weapons to shoot down drones and missiles. On April the 10th, Ukraine and the UK signed a framework agreement on cooperation in defence equipment. In addition, the UK announced that it would provide Ukraine with new military aid of £60 million. This amount includes drones and air defense equipment. U.S. warships destroyed 65 Houthi targets during operation in the Red Sea. The American Ali Burke-class destroyer, USS Kearney, returning from participating in a NATO operation in the Red Sea, is said to have destroyed 65 targets and ground facilities launched by Houthi rebels in Yemen. According to the American press, citing the U.S. Navy, during six months of combat duty in the Red Sea, the destroyer's crew successfully hit 45 air targets launched by the Houthis, including ground attack cruise missiles, anti-ship ballistic missiles, and unmanned systems. In addition, the ship carried out two strikes on Houthi targets in Yemen, destroying 20 targets. USS Kearney also entered U.S. Navy history as one of two ships to first use Standard Missile 3 anti-aircraft guided missiles in combat. 
Although the USS Kearney has been in the US Navy's arsenal for many years, it was not used in actual combat until Iran's massive attack on military installations in Israel. It was then claimed that American warships managed to shoot down four Iranian missiles. However, this claim was subsequently disputed by the Israeli press, which claimed that only two of the eight USS Kearney launched by the US managed to hit their intended targets. The US Navy command refused to comment on this information, citing security requirements. The USS Kearney was also reported to be the first US warship to use an SM-6 missile against a Houthi anti-ship ballistic missile in the Gulf of Aden. Besides, the United States called on Iran on Monday to halt its transfer of an unprecedented amount of weaponry to Yemen's Houthi militias, enabling their fight to carry out reckless attacks on ships in the Red Sea and elsewhere. U.S. Deputy Ambassador Robert Wood told the UN Security Council that if it wants to make progress toward ending the civil war in Yemen, it should collectively call Iran out for its destabilizing role and insist that it cannot hide behind the Houthis. He said there is extensive evidence that Iran is providing advanced weapons, including ballistic and cruise missiles, to the Houthis in violation of UN sanctions. To underscore the Council's concern regarding the ongoing violations of the arms embargo, we must do more to strengthen enforcement and deter sanctions violators, Wood said. The Houthis say their attacks on shipping in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden are aimed at pressuring Israel to end its war with Hamas in Gaza.